Hello everyone, welcome back once again. I am Nicodemus Kane. Today is April the 12th of 2023. I am getting myself situated still. I'm running a little bit late this morning. We're going to read Ezekiel chapter 3. And we're probably not going to talk about too much other stuff. It's a pretty big chapter. And like I said, I'm running late. I'm... I had to wake up at 2 o'clock in the morning to let my dog out because she just would not stop pacing around. She just kept going and kept going and kept going and, and she's old. She's the one that we got from my mom. She's got to be 12, 13. I don't know. She's she's up there. She's a bit, she's a bit senile. She's a bit deaf. She's a bit blind. And... Um, she decided she needed to go outside at 2.30 in the morning. So, so I had to do that. And now I'm starting, or I'm trying to figure out just how in the world to keep her from coming upstairs and waking us up. It's like you can't... I know you can teach an old dog new tricks, but man, you don't want to... <laughs> you don't want to have to... You don't want to have to yell at her. You don't want to have to beat her. What are you going to do? You know? I mean, seriously. Not that I'm going to beat her. But you know what I mean. It's like... I've had to smack her on the butt several times. And, and she just looks at you like she doesn't understand. It's like, what, what was that for? So, you know. You just you feel bad. She's old. But we we took her. You know, we had to. Anyways, I'm tired. Let's put it that way. And I'm kind of dragging my butt around this morning and I'm running a little late so I don't have any current events to talk about anyways I mean other than ugh, other than politics and I don't want to even get into politics because just everybody just wants to be talking about just stupid crap and it's just like ugh. um the only other thing is tonight we are starting our Passover um, we are doing our our Passover dinner tonight. We could not do it last week because we were in Florida. I said that. I prayed to the Father that he would allow us to put it off for a week. Um, <laughs> simply because, again, we there was just no way. We kept trying to figure it out. I kept rolling around in my head. I was like, well, we could have it there and then we could. But then I'm glad we didn't because every meal we had in Florida had bread in it every meal so we said you know what let's put it off until we get home to when we're to where we can be comfortable to where we can do it right so that's going to be tonight so we are going to be doing the the cedar tonight and then we're going to do the feast of unleavened bread for the next week which is good i need a clean out that was the other reason why we said after florida was because we needed to have a clean out for all the junk food and all the crap that we had on the trip down. Or the trip down and the trip back up. Because, man, we just, so much garbage. So anyways, that's tonight. So we're doing that and I don't have anything else. Let's just go ahead and start, let's get into it, why not? Ezekiel chapter 3. You know what? How about if I take a drink of water and I go ahead and preemptively blow my nose so that I don't sneeze halfway through because we all know my allergies love to hit me when I start talking. Give me one second here. While, while, I'm, while I'm doing this, you can, if you feel like it, you know, if you got a Bible laying around, Feel free to open it up. Read along with me. I've said that before. If you have one around, read along with me. Don't just look at it on a phone. I mean, you can look on a phone if you want. I'm not going to tell you what to do. But I always say that using actual paper, there's something of more value to use a paper book to read than just to read it off a screen. Uh, I, that's just a personal preference of mine. It could be a pref personal preference of yours. I don't know. Give me a second, though. Okay. 
All right. So now that I've got that, that's a nice, sh nice shot of cold water going down my throat. And yes, I drink my water cold. Some people say it's not good for you. I don't. I don't know. I don't know if it is or isn't. I don't really care. I like my water cold. It's about the only way I will ever drink my water is if it's cold. So there you go. Ezekiel chapter three. Moreover, he said unto me, son of man, eat that thou findest, eat this roll and go speak unto the house of Israel. So I opened my mouth and he caused me to eat that roll. And he said unto me, Son of man, cause thy belly to eat, and fill thy bowels with this roll that I give thee. You know, I wound up sneezing anyways. Isn't that amazing how that works? Unbelievable. I think it only made it worse. You ever do that, though? You sit there, for people with allergies, you just know if you blow your nose, you just make it worse. It's spring. Oh, it's spring. It's such a beautiful time of the year. But yeah, you, you just, you know, you got to blow your nose, but you know, if you just blow your nose, you're just going to make everything worse. That's exactly what happened. Anyways, let's get back to it. Um, verse three again. And he said unto me, son of man, cause thy belly to eat and fill thy bowels with this roll that I give thee. Then did I eat it, and it was in my mouth as honey for sweetness. And there's a pilcrow right there for. So we're going to go back up to the top. Um, I know I saw that I had several new subscribers, and all I can say is welcome to the party. Um, for anyone that doesn't know, who actually listens to this, uh, I will read until I hit a pilcrow. A pilcrow is that little backwards P at the beginning of a verse. Sometimes you see it. Sometimes you don't. Uh, some of the new Bibles just don't put them in anymore. But they signify the end of what you would call a paragraph. It's the beginning of a new thought process. Now, in different Bibles, the pilcrows seem to be moved around. Even KJVs. So, if your pilgrims are different than mine, then I, I don't know what to tell you. It just is what it is. It's a little weird. Um, but we usually stop at the pilgrims. It gives me a chance to go back and go back over what we just read, because I can't do 27 verses and then go all the way back through it again and keep my thought process on things. This is It's a good way for us to break everything up. <laughs> I'm sorry I keep snucking right in your guys' ears. That's my fault. I need to stop doing that. <laughs> I've been doing it so much more lately, and I'm sorry. I realize that. So, this is after chapter 2, where Ezekiel got... He saw a vision of the angels. You know, chapter 1, we're talking about, you know, the the weirdy angels with the four wings and the four heads and the, you know, all the crazy stuff. And then he looks up and he sees the throne room above the firmament. Okay? That was chapter 1. Chapter 2 was about the man, the person, the figure on the throne, that is God, telling him, you need to go down and you need to start talking to my people. You need to tell them how bad they are being. Do not be afraid of them. Do not fear their words. Do not fear the things that they will do to you. But you have to do all these things. And then he wrote it in a book. And in this book were Lamentations. Now I said this may or may not be the same Lamentations we're talking about with Jeremiah. I don't know, but I find it interesting that the book before this is called Lamentations. Maybe they did that on purpose because we're talking about it here. Maybe not. Maybe it's something different. I don't know. 
What I do know is that this, the things that Ezekiel is about ready to go and tell the people of Judah and Jerusalem are the same things that Jeremiah told them. You get the same stuff pretty much over and over again. But they don't, they're not going to listen. Even God said, whether they will listen or not, they need to hear it. So, it's going to be the same thing. But here, it's saying, take this roll, this roll that had the lamentations in it. So let's go ahead and read it. Moreover, he said unto me, son of man, eat that thou findest, eat this roll, and go speak unto the house of Israel. Now, this is something that's going to lead into the prayer that I do before every Passover meal that we do. I, it's one of those one of those kooky, crazy things. I don't call them coincidences anymore because I don't believe in coincidences anymore. But it's one of those things that is happening where a scripture is lining up with my life. Um, the scripture I'm reading is lining up with my life. Every Passover, I talk about the bread of life. Before we break the bread, before we eat, before we drink the wine, we talk about the bread of life, the food, the word that we are to eat that helps us understand God's word. Christ talked about eating it as if it were his flesh. Because he was the word made flesh. So when you eat of his flesh, you are not a zombie. You're not a cannibal. You're not eating his literal flesh. You are eating the word of God. You're taking in that learning, that understanding. It's the same, it's the same concept of, of a baby drinking the milk and of an adult getting the meat is that when you start out you get that little bit but when you are old enough to understand you get the meat it's the same kind of concept is you're taking the bread this is the word you're taking it as understanding there's a couple different times where it talks about this of taking a roll and putting in your a roll of a roll of understanding and putting it in your mouth and eating it you're eating the word. Christ tells you to eat the bread, which is the word. The bread of life. The word. It's what it is. I've had people come back to me and say, that doesn't sound right. I was like, no, 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 that sounds perfect. That's exactly what it is. You have to read the whole thing and understand. You just pull a place from here, pull a place from there, and realize that they're talking about the same exact thing. So you're eating the word. Now when you drink the blood, of course, that's the, the water of life. That's the sacrificial blood. That's not real blood. You're not supposed to drink real blood. This is the, the water of life. Let's put it that way. The, a lot of people have, have put that towards this fountain of youth um, understanding where there's a water that will cause you to live forever. There will be... There is a place somewhere. I remember it talked about there being waters to which you can live forever. But there will be fruit that you will eat that will cause you to live forever too. In the end days. In, in the, you know, in the, in the kingdom. It's in there somewhere. I know it is. If it's not here, I think it might be in Enoch or... Um, I don't know where else. I can't think of it right off the top of my head. I could be completely wrong, too. I could be completely mixing and matching things that I can't think of. And you do have to remember that... I am not a perfect scholar. I don't know everything. We're still trying to figure this out. That's all I'm trying to do is figure this stuff out. That's why I say don't listen to me. I'm, I'm not your teacher. I'm not your priest. I'm not your pastor. I'm just a guy. If you happen to find something that I say that makes sense, and if you can take it, and if you can prove it, then hey, there you go. That's good stuff. But for me, 
this is it is interesting that again this is Ezekiel being told to, to eat this roll eat this word and we are going to be having our Passover cedar tonight so I it's just one of those things. It's I don't plan this stuff. I swear to you, I do not plan this stuff. Alright. I'm gonna blow my nose again before we continue. Alright. So eat this roll and go speak unto the house of Israel. Verse 2. So I opened my mouth, and he caused me to eat that roll. And he said unto me, Son of man, cause thy belly to eat, and fill thy bowels with this roll that I give thee. Then did I eat it, and it was in my mouth as honey for sweetness. Now there is a couple different places where it talks about the word being great, beautiful. It, it's It's... When you eat these rolls, it's sweet and tasteful in your mouth, and you love it. But then it gets into your belly, and it's bitter, and it hurts. And that, I think, goes along with what we read in Ecclesiastes about he who increases knowledge increases sorrows. Because when it is in your flesh when it is in your belly, when it is in the base of your body, you realize that no matter how sweet the words are, no matter how beautiful the words are, when it comes down to it, you learn just how evil and wicked the world is, how evil and wicked you have been, because no, no man in this world is perfect. And it hurts you. And you get convicted to be better. It makes you sick to your stomach to be a part of this world. To, to know that you have been a part of this system for as long as you have. I think that's the way it is. At least that's the way that I hear it. It could be something completely different. And the more than likely it might tell us if we just keep reading. But that is just how I see it. Again, I could be wrong. Who knows? I'm just a guy. Verse 4. And he said unto me, Son of man, go, get thee unto the house of Israel, and speak with my words unto them. For thou art not sent to a people of a strange speech and of an hard language, but to the house of Israel. Not to many people of a strange speech and of an hard language, whose words they canst not understand. Surely, had I sent thee to them, they would have hearkened unto thee. But the house of Israel will not hearken unto thee, for they will not hearken unto me. For all the house of Israel are impudent and hard-hearted. Behold, I have made thy face strong against their faces, and thy forehead strong against their foreheads. As an adamant harder than a flint, have I made have I made thy forehead. Fear them not, neither be dismayed at their looks, though they be a rebellious house. Moreover he said unto me, Son of man, all my words that I shall speak unto thee, receive in thine heart, and hear with thine ears. And go, get thee to, get thee to them of the captivity unto the children of thy people, and speak unto them, and tell them, Thus saith the Lord God, whether they will hear, or whether they will forbear. Then the Spirit took me up, and I heard behind me a voice of a great rushing, saying, Blessed be the glory of the Lord from his place. I heard also the noise of the wings of the living creatures that touched one another, and the noise of the wheels over against them, and a noise of a great rushing. So the Spirit lifted me up and took me away, and I went in bitterness, in the heat of my spirit. But the hand of the Lord was strong upon me. Alright. So this is this is where the this is where the fun starts. This is God has pretty much said, You ate the roll, you take those words, you speak those words against my people. 
And the angels lifted him up, and they're going to take him, and he's going to speak those words. And then the angels are going to show him all the bad things in the world. Remember, the one, the one verse that I love, well, it's not really a verse, it's a concept. It's not a verse because it's not in there, but it's, it's, it's a concept that no matter how bad you think it is on the surface, no matter how bad you see it in the streets, it's always worse behind closed doors. Evil thrives in secrecy. Evil thrives behind closed doors. There are places in this book where it talks about the priests of God's temple going into a back room and, play, and praying to the sun. That's what we're dealing with. We're dealing with people that you think are good and wholesome and pure turning around and doing despicable things. I've said this over and over again. Your Bible says this over and over again. It talks about in Psalms, you cannot trust people. You cannot trust men. You can only put your trust in God because men, especially those in power, priests, princes, kings will set traps for good people it even i think there's there's places where it says it will set traps for the people of god in order to snare them and trap them and hurt them it says this this isn't my words this is the bible saying it and I've gone back to that over and over again because we keep seeing it. It keeps saying it from here to all the other books that come after this. It says the same thing. People come back and say, well, you know, certain other places say you're supposed to be, you're supposed to be subject to your rulers. But those were for very specific people. Again, Paul was writing to the Romans, to his, to his people in the, the Romans that were getting killed over and over again. You have to remember, the Romans dealt with, with people that believed in Christ by killing them. They didn't want them there. And they were just taking them out in the streets and killing them. Paul said, be subject to them. Don't, don't do this for now. We, we got a better way to do this. You're fighting back too hard. You have to you have to remember this whole thing. This whole process is about Satan and fallen angels and demons trying to kill God's people. Because God had told God told Satan in the in the garden, my my people, my bloodline that I created, my the sons of men will eventually come up against you and they will win. And Satan, since that point, has done everything in his power to hurt and destroy and kill us all. You can't trust anybody. You have to put your faith in God. And then you have to go from there. So, with that in mind, let's read this again. I probably went off on a tangent I, I shouldn't have, but it it adds credence to what's coming. It, it adds um, understanding to what's coming. Because that there's, there's a reason why I was told to read the book the way that I'm reading it. All right? We read the Psalms. We got the understanding in the Psalms. Then it was Isaiah, Ezekiel. We got pulled off into Ecclesiastes, which made sense in, in the long run. The, the words that we found in Ecclesiastes made sense in between Jeremiah and Ezekiel. Then we ran the, the Lamentations. And now we're here, and there's still a process going on here. There's still some kind of understanding to go. So, let's start back up at verse 4. It's so a verse 4. And he said unto me, Son of man, go, get thee unto the house of Israel, and speak with my words unto them. 
remember this is he gave Ezekiel his words to as in a scroll he ate them so that he could have those words it's the bread of life it's the bread of the word it's the the word made flesh remember that for thou art not sent to a people of a strange speech and of an hard language but to the house of Israel not to many people of a strange speech and of an hard language whose words thou canst not understand surely had I sent thee to them they would have hearkened unto thee now get this stuff I'm not sending you to people that you don't know who speak a different language who have a no concept of what you're saying I'm sending you to my people who do know your language who do understand what it is had I sent you to these other people hell they would have listened to you what does that sound like that sounds like the stranger that sounds like the people that are not of Israel that sounds like the Gentiles I was watching um, what was it called the um, oh what was it called Uh, I'm going to have to look it up. Identity Crisis. Um, Rob Skiba talked about it one time. It was from um, Passion for Truth Ministries. Identity Crisis. And it was talking about who is Israel. And I've talked about this before. We are, If you believe in Christ, you have become Israel. You are grafted into the family. It's as simple as that. You are a part of the family. And they were talking about what I've talked about before. Is that it has always been there for the Gentiles. Don't ever let anybody tell you that it is only, the salvation is only for the Jews. It's only for the Israelites. It's only for whoever. It's not. God promised, almost since the very beginning of the book, he said anybody that wants to come in, because you have to remember, he made all men for his pleasure in in his image. He wants us all to come back. It It doesn't matter what bloodline you are. It doesn't matter all of that it matters that you want to come back and be a part of it yes he did kill many swaths of people he did that for reasons he killed off all the giants because all flesh was corrupted everybody everybody pre-flood all flesh was corrupted except for so many of them that were still pure. That's in your Bible. That's what it says. When it talks about the Amalites, the Amalekites, the Jebusites, the whatever, Parasites, those are the ones that were still corrupted on the other side. He told them, wipe everyone out. Wipe the animals out. Wipe the food, wipe the, wipe the crops out. Don't plant anything there for two years. He went out of his way to say, this is soiled land. Do not touch it. Wipe out everything that is on it. This isn't about, oh, hey, they're of a different, they're of a different bloodline than you are. Wipe them out. No. No, this is, there's something else going on here. You should wipe them off the face of the earth so that I can try to, we can try to salvage something he promised he'd never flood the world again like he can't he can't do it over you know he doesn't want to do it over there were reasons there were reasons for it it wasn't just it wasn't just because he's what what did the um, what did uh, Richard Dawkins say is that he's a cruel unjust you know sadistic I don't remember all the rest of them there was a bunch of other ones in there too that 
that for whatever you know for his own pleasure he decides to wipe out the world it's ridiculous it's, it's from a man that doesn't know how to read the book it's exactly what it is so he was saying if if I had sent you to anybody else they would listen to me I can't even get my own people to listen to you it says it in the next the next lines too uh, verse 7 but the house of Israel will not hearken unto thee for they will not hearken unto me for all the house of Israel are impudent and hard hearted because they chose to mix and mingle with other gods for their own pleasure they took pride it even says it pride and pleasure in not worshiping God it said that in Isaiah I think they took pride and pleasure in it they had fun not listening to the father <laughs> how do you I mean you know there's no justification you know for that in God's eyes it's like you you were my people I went out of my way to save you you're supposed to be my chosen people there's a reason you're supposed to be my chosen people because your your savior your ultimate saving grace will be born from you so many other people can come join in but I have to keep a certain I have to keep a certain bloodline pure so that I can have my perfect savior born so that he can save you all because God knew the end from the beginning. God knew that he would have to sacrifice himself in some way, shape, or form in order for the bride to be remarried back to him. I've talked about this before, too. It's the ultimate love story. It's the ultimate amazing love story. I'll put it into context so you can understand. A man, a man marries a woman. The woman goes off and commits adultery. The law of the land says that the man cannot be with that woman, cannot save that woman, be a part of that woman's life because she's unclean now. He would have to die in order for her to be clean. So what does he do? He sacrifices himself. But miracle of miracles, he... he raises from the dead three days later and she gets to remarry him she is clean she does not commit adultery anymore she is clean because he he died she is considered clean again it is it is some kind of a cosmic spiritual law that god put into place he sacrificed himself so that the bride, the church, could be remarried faithfully back to God. It's a beautiful story. It's amazing. I love it. It's great. But his own people will not listen to him. They went with other gods. They went and did their own thing. They didn't care. They went and did all this stuff. Even all, even after he did all of this to try to save them, they, psh, we, we don't want to be around you. We're, we're going to be over here because they got this like crazy sex magic stuff, man. We're going to be over here doing this. That's cool. They got this celebration where you can pass out presents to each other on a certain day of the year. Dude, that's awesome. That's great. We get presents. It's wonderful. They got this other holiday where you get to, you know, put names in a in a box and pull names out of the box and you get to have sex with, with that woman, you know, whatever. It's great. It's lust of the flesh. It's vanity. And keep going. Let's keep going. I, I, I can talk about this stuff all day. Um, that's for, okay, verse 8. Behold, I have made thy face strong against their faces, and thy forehead strong against their foreheads. As an adamant harder than flint have I made thy forehead. Fear them not, neither be dismayed at their looks, though they be a rebellious house. 
Fear them not. Do not be afraid to speak up against evil. I went through a big whole tirade about this yesterday. About do not be afraid to speak up. They will slander you. They will put you down. They will shadow ban you. They will do whatever you want. But do not ever stop speaking the truth. Verse 10. Moreover, he said unto me, Son of man, all my words that I shall speak unto thee, receive in thine hearts and hear with thine ears and go get thee to them of the captivity remember they're in, they're in captivity in Babylon right now unto the children of thy people and speak unto them and tell them thus saith the Lord God whether they will hear or whether they will forbear go to the go to those that are in captivity unto the children of thy people not thy people because they're the ones that will listen the children you have to remember, he said they will be in captivity for 70 years, I think. The three generations of, of Babylonian rulers. 70 years is enough to have two generations of kids. I mean, I don't think they would have, but you have to teach the children. You teach the children how to be better, then they will teach their children how to be even better. That was supposed to be the dream is that your children were supposed to be better than you. Somewhere along the line, we stopped doing that. That's why these children are getting worse and worse, is because the parents don't care anymore. So the children comes out, come out worse than the parents. And guess what happens? Their children come out worse than them. And it snowballs consistently and constantly, just like evil. I've said it before. Why do you think they are so determined to twist and manipulate the children? They did it to you about 120 years ago whenever they started the schooling systems. They made the schooling systems to get your children into school so they can start indoctrinating them as soon as possible. Now they have preschools. They have pre-preschools. They want them in there at three years old. They're stealing your children away. And the children now that, that are having the, the next group of children, they don't want to hear it because they, they think that's the way it's supposed to be. It's hard to, to break that cognitive dissonance. They're stealing your kids. They're doing their damnedest. Everything in their power to take your children away from you. But what are you going to do about it? But this he's saying, go speak to the children of the people. They might listen. Whether they will listen or whether they won't. But they have to hear it. Everybody will hear the word of God in the end. Verse 12. Then the Spirit took me up, and I heard behind me a voice of a great rushing, saying, Blessed be, blessed be the glory of the Lord from his place. Blessed be God. Blessed be the glory of God. This is what the angels say constantly. It says it, it, says it in the Bible. This is what they speak constantly. They call uh, this is a, this is a, another one of those flat earth things. They call the lights in the sky. They call them angels. They say that they are angels. Your Bible says that your angels are constantly singing praises to God. Blessed be the glory of God. Blessed be the Lord, the Most High. You know, whatever it is. There's water. Above the firmament, these are angels that are singing through the firmament. When you when you put sound through water, it creates light. And these angels are supposed to keep their appointed place in the skies. That's how it works. And then they talk about wandering stars, which are angels that are, you know... Wandering around up there, the, the ones that fell, it is their punishment um, to be entrapped. And we call those planets. Those planets are named after gods. It all makes sense. You get into it. Now, there's, of course, there's some people that will talk about um, being on the, south, the southernmost places where everything does all its stuff. And I'm not going to get into that right now. Um, it is a lot about, well, I'm not going to get into it right now. 
I can I can describe it, but that is not what we're here for. It's not what we're here for. So he got taken up. Spirit took him up. Uh, Thirteen. I also I heard also the noise of the wings of the living creatures that touched one another. These are the creatures with the four faces and the four wings and the whole thing. And the noise of the wheels over against them. What are the wheels? The wheels within the wheels with the eyeballs all around them and the whole crazy thing. Those are the spirits of the angels. We talked about this too. It said that the spirits of the angels are inside the wheels. That adds this whole new element to this. These angels, their spirits, they don't carry their spirits with them. But they they keep their spirits inside of these wheels within wheels. That's weird stuff. I, I don't I don't know how to I mean, I know how to process it. I just don't know how to, like, convey what I'm thinking about that. It's, it's, a little, it's different. It's different, but that's what your Bible says. If we're going to read the whole Word of God, or if we're going to believe the whole Word of God, we have to say that that's, that's the thing, too. So he was taken away by these things, and he heard the wings, and then he heard the noise of the wheels and a noise of a great rushing. What I'm going to say the rushing is the water. Remember, there's waters above. God's throne is sitting on the waters above. The earth is his footstool. God walks on water. Christ walked on water. Christ walked on ro- water just before he asked his, his apostles, his disciples, who do you think I am? If they would have taken everything and put it together, and they would have said... You're God. You're you just walked on water. Just like it says that the most high does. You are God. That would have been that would have been like one of those linchpins, you know? Oh, it's not just, oh hey, look, this guy can walk on water. It's a miracle. No, people don't even understand what that means people are out there trying to do it all the time now with like boards right underneath the surface of the water and you know magicians are saying oh look I can walk on water (laughs) I can disprove Christ no no Christ is trying to show you something that you didn't even realize was there and it's amazing how his disciples who before he pulled them from their lives They were not priests. They were not pastors. They were not prophets. They were fishermen. Pulled Peter right out of a boat. (laughs) I'm I'm sorry. It's just funny, though. Pulled Peter right out of a boat. It's like, follow me. You want to catch something? You want to catch something big? Here, I'll I'll make you a fisher of men. Follow me. (laughs) He was a nobody. He was like Jeremiah. Jeremiah was a nobody. Jeremiah became a prophet because God picked him. He went, you're going to speak my word. Ezekiel is a priest, though. We, we, we've found that one out, but they were nobodies. But he picked them up and he told them the word. He, he told them the message. And somewhere along the line, they would have put two and two together and said, he walks on water like God walks on water. That's him. That's our Messiah. It's good stuff. So anyways, he heard a great rushing. It could be the waters above. I don't know. Uh, 14. So the spirit lifted me up and took me away. And I went in bitterness in the heat of my spirit. But the hand of the Lord was strong upon me. So what is my bitterness? I got to see this. 14. In my bitterness... I went in my bitterness, bitter of water or food. He was discontented. His stomach was probably discontented. Just like my stomach is discontented right now. He had the word that he put in his mouth that was sweet and amazing. But it started hurting him. It was bitter in his belly. 
he who increases knowledge increases sorrows. You know you are being put into the front lines. You have all of this knowledge and all of this wisdom and you know that not only has everyone else fallen, you've fallen with them. Not only do you know they will not listen to you, but you know you can't save everybody. And it hurts. That hurts. That's that's the most that's the most bitter and ruthless pain in the world. Is that no matter how much you try, how much you speak, how much you scream, how much you yell, people will refuse to listen. And it hurts. I'm getting emotional thinking about it. No matter how much I sit here and talk, no matter how much I talk to my family, no matter, no matter how much I talk to my mother, my father, my whoever it is, they won't hear it. Even my own, even my own wife, I can only tell her so much before she has to tell me to stop. This is not a this is not an easy journey. It's not an easy journey. And I'm not calling myself a prophet, and I'm not calling myself a priest, and I'm not But knowing knowing the truth trying to speak the truth to different people, it just trying to get them to understand that we're only trying to save their lives and they just won't hear it. It's it's a it's bitter. It is an absolute bitter feeling. And it hurts. And it hurts so much. But they lifted him up in his bitterness, in the heat of his spirit. But the hand of the Lord was strong upon him. Because God said, Do not fear. They will not listen to you. They will mock you. They will scoff you. They will laugh at you. But you have to speak the word. You have to get up every every single day in the morning and tell them, tell them over and over and over. You have to speak it. They have to hear it. Jeremiah said that too. Just so you know. Uh, Verse 15. Then I came to them of the captivity at Tel Abib that dwelt by the river of Chebar. And I sat where they sat and remained there astonished among them seven days. And it came to pass at the end of seven days that the word of the Lord came unto me, saying, Son of man, I have made thee a watchman unto the house of Israel. Therefore hear the word at my mouth, and give them warning from me. When I say unto the wicked, Thou shalt surely die, and thou givest them no warning, that thou givest them that. Let me try this again. Verse 18. When I say unto the wicked, Thou shalt surely die, and thou givest him not warning, nor speakest to warn the wicked from his wicked way to save his life. The same wicked man shall die in his iniquity, but his blood will I require at thine hand. Yet if thou warn the wicked, and he turn not from his wickedness, nor from his wicked way, he shall die in his iniquity, but thou hast delivered thy soul. Again, when a righteous man doth turn from his righteousness and commit iniquity, and I lay a stumbling block before him, he shall die. Because thou hast not given him warning, he shall die in his sin, and his righteousness, which he hath done, shall not be remembered. But his blood will I require at thine hand. Nevertheless, if thou warn the righteous man, and the righteous sin not, and he doth not sin, he shall surely live, because he is warned. Also thou hast delivered thy soul. Let me take a drink of water, and we'll go over this. Okay. So there's some classic stuff going on here. Stuff that people may have heard before. Is that if you were a watchman on the wall... If you are called to warn the people and you don't warn them, 
and something happens to them, that blood is on your hands. But if you warn them and they don't listen, that blood is on their hands and you are forgiven for it because they chose not to listen. This is another prime example of if you have the ability to warn somebody that they are going to do something that's going to hurt them and if you choose to do nothing then you are at fault I liken this to the people that will sit and watch something happen to somebody either a fight, a stabbing a killing, a robbery an accident, whatever it is and instead of getting in and helping they pull out their phone and they film it this is the same concept if you're not here to help people then you're hurting people it's the same idea I've seen it too many times you ever wonder why you see so many videos of people getting hurt and beat up and and all these other things because people don't care anymore People just don't care. I, 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 it started, it started back in 2010, I think 2010, 2012. The worst video I've ever seen in my life, and it's only gotten worse from there, is the, I don't know how many, three, four kids standing by a lake and a guy was in the water drowning and they just filmed it. They filmed it and laughed and they just kept filming. And he went underwater. And they just kept filming. And four or five minutes went by. And eventually one of the kids said, Oh, I think he's dead. And another kid said something like, Well, that's what you get. That's where we are in the world. People would rather film it to get views than to put the phone down and help But it's the same concept. If you choose not to help people simply by warning them, simply by opening your mouth and saying, hey, you know, you probably shouldn't do this. You probably shouldn't do that. You should keep your eyes open whenever this happens. If you warn them, and if they are able to save their lives because of it, then you will be rejoiced in heaven but if you don't warn them that will be against you that will their blood will be on your hands let's read it because it's in here it's pretty much word for word then I came to them of the captivity at Tel Abib that dwell by the river of Chebar and I sat where they sat and remained there astonished among them seven days. He didn't tell them the whole time he was there. He watched. He didn't say anything for seven days. And that's when God said, oh, no, wait, wait. I got to go tell him. He's got to speak because he's, you know, I went through all this trouble of giving him the word. And I told him to go speak the word. And now he's just sitting there doing nothing. Verse 16. And it came to pass at the end of seven days that the word of the Lord came unto me saying, what the heck are you doing? <laughs> no, the word of the Lord came, came to me saying, son of man, I have made thee a watchman unto the house of Israel. Therefore, hear the word at my mouth and give them warning from me. Don't just sit there and watch. You have to speak up. 18. When I say unto the wicked, thou shalt surely die, and thou givest him not warning, nor speakest to warn the wicked from his wicked way to save his life, the same wicked man shall die in his iniquity, but his blood will I require at thine hand. He's going to die either way, but if you would have warned him, he might have lived. He will die if you don't warn him, but if you warn him and he actually changes his ways, then you will be rewarded. But if he dies, I'm going to take that blood from your hand. Now, 19 says pretty much what I just said. 19, if yet if thou warn the wicked and he turn not from his wickedness, nor from his wicked way, he shall die in his iniquity. But thou hast delivered thy soul. 
It's basically the same thing. If you warn him, if you warn him and he doesn't turn from his ways, that's on him. You know, he he had his chance. Everybody will will hear the word eventually. Twenty again, when a righteous man doth turn doth turn from his righteousness and commit iniquity, and I lay a stumbling block before him, he shall die. Because thou hast not given him warning, he shall die in his sin, and his righteousness which he hath done shall not be remembered. But his blood will I require at thine hand. Think about that for a second. A righteous man who does righteousness turns away from righteousness and commits iniquity. When he dies, all of that righteousness will not be remembered. Think about that for a second. I have to think about that for a second. I struggle every day with my own my own weaknesses, my own sins, my own lusts, my own desires. That that right there makes you think. 21. Nevertheless, if thou warn the righteous man that the righteous sin not, and, the, and he doth not sin, he shall surely live because he is warned. Also thou hast delivered thy soul. If you warn him, and if he doesn't listen, then he will die in his sin. But if you do warn him, and if he is able to turn away from it, he will live, so will you. And you will deliver your soul. I mean, are we are we still doing the all you have to do is believe in, in Christ, you know, faith or salvation by faith alone? Are we still doing that? Are we still doing the uh, once saved, always saved? Are we still doing that? Your Bible said right there, if a righteous man turn from his righteousness and commit iniquity, everything he did is not remembered. The, this, this part of the Bible is shattering all of the current the current doctrines of Christianity. This is something I speak out about a lot because it seems like they have gone out of their way to water down Christianity as much as possible to make it, you know, all you got to do is just be a Monday through Saturday sinner. You just, as long as you come into church on Sunday and pay your tithes and sing your songs, you'll be a-okay. Go back out in the world and sin and come right on back. Be sure to wear your Sunday dress. Your Sunday best, I should say. Sit in the best seats. Sit in the best seats. Pay the best money. You'll be just fine. This, this is destroying this is destroying modern Christianity doctrine. That's all I gotta say. I am not a I am not a naysayer, you know, peace priest, prophet, whatever. I'm just reading a book. Everything that I'm reading, everything that I've read so far in the Bible has shown me that everything I was taught in either a Sunday school or taught through, I don't know, anywhere that, that I learned about, you know, what it was, what it means to go to church and be a Christian. It's just not right. There's more to it. There's something else to it. That's why we're talking about it. Because I'm trying to figure it out. But yes, yeah, some of these things are convicting me. So, you know, if you are, you feel like you're being convicted by anything I'm saying, don't worry. I'm in the same boat. I'm in the same boat. I'm in the same place. Because I am not perfect either. Verse 22. Let's finish this up. 22. And the hand of the Lord was there upon me, and he said unto me, Arise, go forth into the plain, and I will, I will there talk with thee. Then I arose and went forth into the plain, and behold, the glory of the Lord stood there, as the glory which I saw by the river of Chebar. I want to just make sure, yeah, we're still recording, we're still good. Where was I at? Then I arose and went forth into the plain, and behold, the glory of the Lord stood there as the glory which I saw by the river of Chebar, and I fell on my face. Then the Spirit entered into me and set me upon my feet, 
and spake with me, and said unto me, Go, shut thyself within thine house. But thou, O son of man, behold, thou, they shall put bands upon thee, and shall bind thee with them, and thou shalt not go out among them. And I will make thy tongue cleave to the roof of thy mouth, that thou shalt be dumb, and shalt not be to them, and shalt not be to them a reprover, for they are a rebellious house. But when I speak with thee, I will open thy mouth, and they and thou shalt say unto them, Thus saith the Lord God, He that heareth, let him hear; he that forbeareth, let him forbear, for they are a rebellious house. All right. Now, there's going to be more stuff coming that God says to Ezekiel, but that is where the chapter stops. So, back up to 22. And the hand of the Lord was there upon me, and he said unto me, Arise, and go forth into the plain, and I will talk, and I will there talk with thee. Then I arose and went forth into the plain, and behold, the glory of the Lord stood there, as the glory I saw by the river of Chebar, and I fell on my face, because it's the glory of God. He saw the same thing at the river of Chebar. So he stopped, and he fell on his face. I would fall on my face too. I mean, it's the glory of God. What do you want? It's it's the most beautiful and amazing thing ever. Of course you'd fall on your face. What would you do? 24. Then the Spirit entered into me, and set me upon my feet, and spake with me, and said unto me, Go, shut thyself within thine house. Okay. Go, shut thyself within thine house. But thou, O son of man, behold, they shall put bands upon thee, and shall bind thee with them, and thou shalt not go out among them. So somewhere along the line, he is saying they are going to lock you up. Probably for what he is about ready to say. And I will make thy tongue cleave to the roof of thy mouth, that thou shalt be dumb, and shalt not, and shalt not be to them a reprover, for they are a rebellious house. They will lock you up in chains. They will put you away. And when that time comes, I will... I will make it to where you will not be able to speak. You will not be able to say anything with them. Because they're not going to hear it. No matter what you do. They're going to hear what I what I tell you to tell them. And when they do, they're not going to like it. And they're going to lock you up and then I'm going to make you dumb. Why? I don't know. There's more to this that's coming. We just, you know, we have to keep reading. But we're going to be reading it tomorrow. So let's finish this up, though. They are a rebellious house. 27. But when I speak with thee, I will open thy mouth. And thou shalt say unto them, Thus saith the Lord God, He that heareth, let him hear. And he that forbeareth, let him forbear. Because they are a rebellious house. So, he will only be speaking when God wants him to speak. Now, this is very similar to... I want to say it was Paul that said to not get into the old wives tales the old arguments the you know stuff that doesn't do any good to reprove anything um what was the other one something about when they come to get you um or when you when you are sent to speak unto the peoples that you are not to rehearse what you say that god will put the words in your mouth the words that they need to hear um, which is very similar to something Solomon has said in the Proverbs about not opening your mouth unless you... What was it exactly? Something along the lines of not opening your mouth until you've 
heard the full argument or something. I don't remember exactly what it was. Or, you know, keeping keeping silent until it's time to not be, you know, until it's time to talk. Something, something similar to that. I remember exactly what it was. But it's kind of like that. God said it, they will lock you up. And when they lock you up, I will make you dumb. You will not say a word. You will not be able to speak a word, say a word unto them. But when it comes time, when it comes time for you to speak in front of these people, I will put the words in your mouth. You will not have to worry about it. Same way he did with Moses. Same way he did with Aaron. Same way he did with, hell, Daniel to a point. Same same way he does with everybody. Same way he does with Jeremiah. Is that he will speak through you. He will give you the words that you need to hear. That they need to hear. And whether they will hear it, they will hear it. Whether they won't, they won't. He that hears, let him hear. He that doesn't want to hear, let him not hear. And that's about where it is. So, this is, again... <laughs> sometimes it just it feels like life, you know? Just day in and day out. You just want to... You want to help people. You want to warn people. You want to tell the people especially if you're new to the truth as soon as you find the truth out as soon as you really understand what it means to be living in the lies that we live in you want to tell everybody you want to just like point at everything and say look at this look at this look at that and people won't hear it people will refuse to hear it and it wears you down but God says don't be afraid keep speaking up don't rehearse what you're going to say walk into wherever it is pray to him that he gives you the words to say and he will give it to you and from there whether they hear it they hear it whether they don't they don't some people will hear it most people won't hear it don't waste your time on those that won't hear it don't, what is the word? Don't throw your pearls to the swine or don't put your, don't, yeah, it's like don't throw pearls to the swine or something. Don't feed your best stuff to the pigs. Even Christ said that the food, the good food of the word isn't for the dogs. And there was a woman that came up and she told him, she said, even the dogs can lick the scraps from under the table. There are those that will hear it on the outer, on the outer edges. They will hear one part of anything you have to say and it will plant a seed and they'll come running. I know that that line in that passage doesn't mean what it what it says it means, but it's it's similar. It's the same thing. Don't throw your pearls before swine. Don't don't worry. You know, don't throw your best food to the dogs. But even the dogs will lick the scraps off the floor. Even. Even those people that you don't think are listening. They will hear part of it. Hopefully it'll plant a seed. That's all I've been trying to do. That's all I've been trying to do is just trying to get people just to talk. Just to just to converse. Just to speak the truth. There are so many people... Back in 2018, 2019, there were so many people that were out there speaking the truth, talking about the truth, videos all over YouTube. Before the censorship really hit, it was everywhere. And everybody was talking about stuff. I mean, it's just, you couldn't, you couldn't throw a rock on a front page or, well, not front page so much, but on your uh, suggested videos of YouTube 
and not hit a truther video, you know? And it was beautiful and it was glorious. It was amazing. And then the censorship kicked in. And then I just kept seeing truther after truther. They just gave up. It's like if they couldn't post on YouTube, they didn't want to post anywhere. But it's like there's other places to go. We have other video platforms. No, we do it. No, you just you just didn't want to give up your revenue streams what happened. Because you can't make money on BitChute. You can't make money on Odyssey. You can't make money, you know. There's no place where you can make the YouTube money. It's what it is. But it was after that where I started seeing people on Twitter. You used to say the same thing. I can't do it. Nobody's listening. Nobody cares. I'm going to I'm just going to worry about myself. And all I can think is uh, you can't give up. You can't just give up like that. If you have the truth in you and you know the truth, you cannot give up on people like that. You have to keep speaking out. I've thought about it myself. There's been times where I've just said, man, I, I can't do this anymore. But damn it, I'm trying to help people. I'm trying to do my best. I may not be able to be saved. I've already said that. I've got my own issues I'm trying to deal with. But I'm going to be damned if I'm going to have anybody else's blood on my hands as I'm going down. I'm trying to lift other people up. Hell, I'm trying to lift other people up to maybe they can lift me back up. You never know. Always keep pushing forward. Do not give into this system. Do not give into this evil world. Do not let them win. Fear not. Where is where, where it at? Where is it at? Fear them not. Neither be dismayed at their looks, though they may, though they be a rebellious house. Whether they hear it or whether they don't. Everyone that hears my voice right now, speak up. Speak the truth. Don't ever stop speaking the truth. And if they don't hear it, move on. If they don't want to hear the truth, move on. Find somebody else that will hear it. We need as much total coverage as possible. Um, I'm going to go ahead and stop. That's got to be enough for me. I uh, got to get ready for work. I shall uh, talk to everyone later. God bless all of you. Take care of yourselves. Um, yeah, that's all I got. All right. I shall talk to you all later. No, I'm not. done. I can't. I got to keep going. <laughs> I already told you guys before that I hate stopping on very specific time stamps. Last thing I need is a stop on a 113, because, you know, people, um, people might look at that, oh, look, he's, he's Illuminati confirmed. Yeah, yeah, I would rather sit here and, and babble on for a minute instead of topping, stopping on a specific time. What do we got coming up as far as timestamps, anyways? Uh, 420, which <laughs> there's people out there, yeah, 420, hoo <laughs> hoo. Yeah, right. Well, you know, there's a lot of other things that happened on April the 20th that you should probably look out for. Um, but then you, you're going into May, you got 5 1, which is May Day, uh, 5 5, Cinco de Mayo all part of the evil holiday of is it Beltane? Is that what it is? May is truly a, a season of, or a month of evil. Um, what else do you got in May? 5-7. I keep seeing 57s. So maybe there's something that might happen there too. I don't know. Also, it, it seems like it is... Um, 
what is it? Is it bank robbing season? Did we have like two banks that got robbed or something like that? And of course, isn't it amazing how everybody wants to talk about the uh, the items that were used? <laughs> you can't even say the word on uh, on YouTube anymore. The weapons that were used. Um, the the one thing I saw was somebody said that, you know, oh he just bought it a week before he did it, <laughs> so that's going to be background checks. Um, nobody's going to say anything about his mental health. Um, then there was another one that just happened. Somebody was robbing something. So somebody's robbing a bank, and it's like, are we not going to talk about, you know, how broken people are that might cause them to do this? If it's even real, because I question everything now. I, I don't even know if anything's real anymore. But seriously, and then of course, saying the whole mental health thing opens up a whole another case of worms because then you have, then you have um, forced mental health checks, just like 1984, where they will take you and they will check your mental health. Make sure that you are compliant. So it's like we're double screwed either way. I don't, I, I don't know what else to say about it. It's just, it's crazy. So we have to be careful. We have to use discernment in all things. Make sure that we're not falling for stupidity. Um, <laughs> make sure we're not falling for failed male actors that find the roles... That, that found a role a failed male actor that found a role as a female which is a role that he can play only in this point in time in which he will never be able to be called a bad actor or anything and oh boy howdy he's a bad actor what's worse is he's a bad female women don't act like that I'm sorry not even the stupidest women act like that but he can go out there and he can do and say whatever the hell he wants to. And nobody can talk to him, talk bad about him otherwise. Because they don't want to be called, you know, transphobic. That's what it is. It's, it's just like these, it's like these bad athletes. These, these bad male athletes that found out that if they dress and act like a woman, they could play women's sports where they are top of their league. It's exactly what happened. This is this is not about this is not about having equal rights. This is not about any of that. This is about men that are so bad at what they do that they're finding that they can be better by cheating. It's exactly what it is. It's cheating. Excuse me. Tell me it's not. Tell me it's not cheating. And I'll call you a liar right to your face. Men should not be doing what women do. There's reasons why the sexes have been separated for years upon years upon years. It's because they're completely different. You don't see any women going into male sports and dominating male sports. But you see these weak-ass sissy boys going out there and destroying women's sports. Destroying world records that have been held for years. That these women are struggling. This one dude that went out there, he did it with ease. Why? Because he's a dude. <laughs> What, what do you think? What the hell do you think is going to happen whenever a guy goes out there and swims in a, a women's swim meet? He's going to be faster than they are. Men are built different. What do you think is going to happen whenever the guy, whenever a guy puts on a dress and goes out there and acts like a complete fool and a buffoon, and nobody says anything about it? He's just going to get worse. And it's going to get worse. I've told you this from the very beginning. Evil snowballs consistently and constantly. Until it stopped. Because people are making fools of you. And people keep falling for it. 
I don't know how many times I've seen... <coughs> I don't know how many times I've seen these videos get shared over and over and over again. And you know what? Every view, no matter where it is, where it comes from, every one of those views gets a tick on an ad revenue somewhere. Somebody somewhere is making money every time you watch that video. Just keep feeding the machine. Whatever. I'm going to go, though. You guys take care of yourselves. God bless every one of you. Don't fall for the lies. Don't fall for the nonsense. Um, for those that are just ending their Passover, I hope it was good for you. Uh, for those that might be starting for whatever reason, like us, you know, I hope it's good for you. Um, it's a good clean out. Well, I'm going to get a good clean out. I'm probably going to lose some weight during all this too, because I, every year when I do this, I put myself down to strictly vegetables and fruits. I get one meal every day where it's like, you know, it's a big meal. We Tomorrow's tacos. I, I love it though. Cause it's like, it's all I, all I eat is like fruity pebbles and tacos. <laughs> No, we, no, we've got other meals. We've got other meals that we do, but it's it's um for the rest of the day, it's it's fruits and vegetables, and you know, it's really awesome. My lunches are really really small because I purposely do this, and I stop drinking juices, and I stop stop drinking all kinds of other stuff, and it's pure water all the way through. And usually by the end of it, I feel so much better than I did going into it. And there's, what was it, two years ago, two or three years ago, I um, I kept it up for another week. I couldn't, I couldn't last past that though. Uh, but I kept it up for another week, and I wound up losing like 20, 30 pounds within the two weeks. And I was like, yeah, this is great, but man, I could really use a cheeseburger. You know, it was one of those cut types of deals. That's what it is. It's 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 a low carb diet. I think it's a no carb diet, isn't it? Cuz you're there's no bread. No bread, no leavening. And it's not just about food either. It's the, there's a the whole other aspect to it. I know there is and somebody could say that and say, oh, you're you're missing the point. No, I get the point. I understand what it is. I'm just talking about the actual food aspect of it. The best diets that I have seen out there has been low carb, no carb. The Most High tells you, going into a new year, to do a week full of a no carb diet to clean your system out. Hey, you know, there was never a bad commandment from God. A lot of people can say there was. But there are no bad commandments from God. Maybe we ought to start listening. I don't know. I will talk to you all later. Take care of yourselves. God bless.